How fast can a Spartan throw a stone? Seems like a simple question at face value, and one that crossed my mind when I saw an image by Justin Grosjean over on Twitter of a Spartan doing exactly that. And as the thought played across my mind, I thought it'd be a relatively straightforward video. I was wrong. Throwing seems to represent one of those rabbit hole subjects, where it seems relatively simple at the face of it, relatively straightforward and intuitive. I mean, we've all been throwing things since we were babies, when we realised that throwing things creates a noise when it hits the ground and usually gets some sort of reaction out of our parents. But the ability to throw efficiently is almost a uniquely human capability, far removed from the rest of the animal kingdom and even some of our closest living relatives, genetically speaking. Humans can generate incredible speed, force and accuracy through a throw, even enough to kill. A human can throw at speeds between 70 and 90 miles per hour, with elite level athletes achieving the highest speeds, which is significantly faster than most other animals due to the unique design of the human shoulder muscles and tendons that store elastic energy for powerful throws. Throwing is a physical action that consists of mechanically accelerating a projectile and then releasing it into a ballistic trajectory, usually with the aim of impacting a distant target. Throwing typically refers to hand throwing by animals with prehensile forelimbs, in which the projectile is grasped in the hand and the proximal limb segments move through compounded kinematic chains to impart a mechanical advantaged swinging motion. Primates are the most proliferative throwers in the animal kingdom. Of all primates, humans are by far the most capable throwers and throw a large variety of projectiles with a much greater complexity efficiency and accuracy. Throughout human evolution, humans, especially Homo sapiens, have used hand-thrown projectiles for hunting and in warfare, first through rock throwing and then through weapon throwing, axes, spears, darts, and into the modern day with payload carrying devices like hand grenades, tear gas canisters and flashbangs. With the advent of the bow and arrow and later gunpowder-based firearms, human innovation into throwing tools as a weapon effectively halted. But throwing, either by hand or with tools, has persisted for recreational purposes, such as thrower tools in fishing and clay pigeon shooting, or as a form of exercise. Thus, throwing is still performed in many sports and games, particularly ball games. Throwing dates back two million years to Homo erectus. Development of the offensive throwing of projectiles is mostly a development of the human lineage although the aim throwing of sticks and rocks by male chimpanzees during agonistic displays has been observed, first described by Jane Goodall in 1964. Accumulative throwing, that is, the targeted and aimed throwing of an object at a specific target, leading to the gradual accumulation of a stone pile, has also been described for chimpanzees. Wooden darts were used for throwing from at least the Middle Paleolithic by Homo heidelbergensis. The spear throw is a development of the Upper Paleolithic, certainly in use by the Salutrian era, circa 20,000 years ago. Human athletes can achieve throwing speeds close to 145 kilometers per hour, or around 90 miles per hour, far in excess of the maximal speed attainable by chimpanzees at around 30 kilometers per hour, or 19 miles an hour. This ability reflects the ability of the human shoulder muscles and tendons to store elasticity and until it is needed to propel an object. The actual physics of throwing objects by humans are even now being studied at length, since there's such a huge variance in parameters to the process of throwing an object. There is an ongoing body of research trying to ascertain the specifics of throwing perfection, analysing different body types, compositions, level of activity, proficiency in throwing, accuracy of reproducibility, techniques, projectile weights, shapes, masses, biomechanics, physiological profiles, height, weight, age categories, and literally dozens of other parameters to really nail down what is the perfect throw, and it's becoming more and more obvious that there is no one way to throw a perfect throw. During the research for this video, I found one of the more fascinating mechanisms that are at play during the act of a human throwing an object is a process called latch-mediated spring activation. It's a biomechanical strategy that allows organisms to achieve extraordinarily rapid movements far exceeding what their innate muscles are capable of producing. In these systems, a muscle or other energy sources slowly and forcefully loads an elastic element or a, a spring with potential energy. A latch mechanism then holds that loaded spring in place until the trigger releases it, rapidly converting stored energy into kinetic energy. This time compression of energy release is what amplifies the power output 
allowing ultra-fast motions. And this process happens in four distinct phases. Energy loading, where a muscle contracts slowly, generating high forces over relatively long duration. This action deforms an elastic structure such as tendons, exoskeletal components, or specialized protein assemblies, and stores energy as elastic potential energy. Latching, while the energy is being stored, a latch, which could be a physical catch, adhesive mechanism, or a geometric constraint, prevents the elastic element from releasing its energy prematurely. The latch essentially locks the system in its loaded state. Rapid release, or the actuation, which is when a trigger event causes the latch to disengage, either instantaneously or gradually. The stored energy is quickly transformed into kinetic energy. This conversion propels a body part or the entire organism with a burst of speed that far exceeds the capabilities of direct muscle contraction and the fourth stage being the propelled movement stage which is the rapid movement of the propelled mass for example with a mantis shrimp striking claw or a trap jaw ant's mandibles or a flea's jump which can be extremely brief often on the order of microseconds to milliseconds yet immensely powerful latch mediated spring activation systems are particularly common in small organisms because they overcome the intrinsic trade-off between muscle force and contraction speed by storing energy over a long time and then releasing it almost instantaneously these systems amplify the effective power output this strategy not only permits remarkable feats of speed and acceleration but also minimizes the risk of self-damage by localizing the high-energy event outside of the main body structure. Recent research in LAMSA is not only deepening our understanding of these natural systems, but also inspiring innovations in bio-inspired robotics and material sciences, where very similar principles are applied to design fast, efficient, and resilient mechanical systems. But to pull this back to the inspiration and motivation behind this video, we first need to talk about some definitions of throwing before we can really nail down an answer. The notion of throwing typically refers to an action performed without mechanical assistance. But mechanical assistance, as long as it does not involve the release of chemical or electrical energy, does not fundamentally change the nature of the action and thus can be considered as throwing too. This muddies the water slightly when we bring Mjolnir into the mix, as it achieves that symbiotic relationship with the Spartan through electromechanical means. But ultimately, in the interest of actually having a final answer, and the fact that the suit mimics the wearer's motions seamlessly, we'll ignore this deviation in definitions. So how fast could a Spartan throw a rock? Well, specifically talking about the Spartan 2s here, Spartan 2s are three times stronger and three times faster than the average human being thanks to their augmentations, being capable of lifting three times their body weight immediately following augmentation and react with reaction times 300% faster than human base normal immediately following augmentations. As I've said many times before, over enough time to acclimate to the augmentations and, and get used to them, it's entirely possible the Spartans would get stronger and faster with time. However, in this circumstance, the only hard and fast numbers that we actually have in regards to Spartan physiology are detailed immediately following augmentation. So we're kind of stuck in a rut there. And then we have Mjolnir Mark VI powered assault armor, which amplifies the user's speed and strength by a factor of five. But we also have to now bear in mind that the armor itself, the armor's properties could throw off, so to speak, our estimations on the speed of a Spartan's throw based on the permutation of Mjolnir we're talking about. For example, the Mark V only amplified the user's strength by double but still maintained the five-fold increase in reaction time, whereas the Mark VI does a five-fold increase in strength and a five-fold increase in reaction time. And it's entirely possible that the later or more modern Mjolnir platforms, like the Gen 2 and Gen 3 platforms, amplify this even further but it's impossible to know because we've not been given the figures. So in this video, we have no choice but to accept that it's going to be a Spartan 2 wearing Mjolnir Mark VI powered assault armor of the Gen 1 platform and nothing more modern. And it's at this point, as we're nearing kind of the calculation aspect of this video, that we need to address the fact that the ads that we come to may not perfectly line up one-to-one -one with a similar throw performed in practice. There are just too many variables involved. The nature of a throw is dependent on many factors, including the experience level of the thrower. For our sakes, we'll assume elite level athlete proficiency, given the Spartan's physiological superiority over all other humans. The strength of the throw and the speed of the throw both will obviously be amplified through the augmentations. The throwing technique and the range of motion, which itself may actually be partially limited by the Mjolnir armor 
as it is on record that Spartans needed to conduct certain motions in specific ways to avoid the armour self-interrupting, which would then directly impact the range of motion and technique. The capabilities are the tendons, muscles and ligaments to store elastic energy, which isn't specifically covered in the Spartans' augmentation procedures. The height of the thrower also plays a positive correlation to throwing speed. Spartans are significantly taller than normal humans and thus have a larger proportion. Longer arm length, for example, represents a mechanical advantage in being able to accelerate the object to higher velocities due to the distance from the pivot point. Even the spin imparted to the object that may aid aerodynamics or the shape of the thrown object itself can positively or negatively affect throwing velocity based on its air resistance, spin axis and rate. Also consider that higher velocities of objects encounter greater air resistance, again dependent on their size, mass and shape. All of these factors can adversely affect the final figure. So with all that in mind, it is worth considering the fact that the final figure may be a way off from if the same throw was performed practically, but as of yet we don't have real life Spartan super soldiers, so the comparison maybe shouldn't be drawn. So first we need to find out the parameters and properties of a throw by an elite level athlete in what we're going to call an ideal throw. Now an ideal throw means that no outside physics affect the throwing properties itself. We're just taking into consideration the mass of the object being thrown, the speed at which it's being thrown, the force at which it's being thrown, and then finding out the properties from those numbers. Once we've done that, we can compare those results to real-world parameters for known throws, and that gives us a ratio of the difference between an ideal throw and a throw in practice. Once we have that ratio as a baseline, we can then apply that to the Spartan throwing along the same kind of lines. I just want to interject here and bring you guys a public service announcement. On March 23rd, I'm holding a 1v1 tournament in my Discord server. There is no fee for entry, but some tasty prizes and some 0-0 merch on the table for the winnings. In order to get involved, you have to join my official Installation 00 Discord server, link down below, and join our affiliate Spartan Space Discord server, run by Spartan John, and acquire the PvP role from both servers. Information on the specifics will follow thereafter. The tournament itself will be streamed over my YouTube, my Twitch, and Foamforge Cosplay's Twitch and Spartan John's Twitch simultaneously, so make sure you enlist by March 15th for the upcoming Installation 00 1v1 tournament. And bear in mind this is one of at least four tournaments that we plan to host this year including some 4v4, some Halo 2 classics, and some Husky Raid. So remember, join my Discord and Spartan John's Discord, links below, acquire the PvP role, and enlist by March 15th. Set your boots on the line, Spartans. An unaugmented elite level athlete can throw a stone around the mass of a baseball, 5 to 5 and a quarter ounces, or 142 to 150 grams, with a force maxing out at around 1,000 newtons. In an ideal throw, that tops out at an acceleration of 6,667 meters per second squared. Assuming no initial velocity, and the act of throwing takes two seconds, including the wind-up and release, with the wind-up accounting for most of this time, where the energy is being stored for the throw, this gives us a throwing speed of 29,827 miles per hour, or 13,334 meters per second. Obviously, no one has ever thrown anything at that speed because we're talking about an ideal throw here. Once you compare this ideal throw to a practical throw, you can calculate the ratio or percentage difference between the ideal and practical. And once you add in the variables, that drops to 90 miles an hour or 40 meters per second, which is 333 times slower than an ideal throw although we'll round down to 300 for simplicity's sake. That means a normal throw impacts with 120 joules of kinetic energy, or 88.5 foot-pounds. Now, bear in mind that throwing stones at someone can be lethal. That's why death by stoning is a thing. It's widely accepted that any projectile that's thrown with greater than 59 foot-pounds of force can be lethal through blunt force trauma. So already, a normal human being is capable of throwing a stone at another human being and kill them. But of course we're dealing with a Spartan here throwing a stone at an alien, a brute no less. So let's now tackle the idea of a Spartan throwing the same stone, the same mass, and then factor in the ratio of ideal versus practical 
to get a baseline feel here. So the stone weighs the same 150 grams. The force or newtons of the throw goes from a thousand newtons max through a threefold increase in strength from the augmentations, giving us 3000 newtons, and then a fivefold increase in strength through Mjolnir, giving us 15,000 newtons. This then gives us an acceleration of 100,000 meters per second squared. The speed enhancement of the Spartan's augmentations and Mjolnir would have the most profound effect on the release stage of the throw, but the wind-up still accounts for most of the time involved, so we can conservatively reduce this speed to 1.5 seconds to account for the faster release. Now we put these figures into a velocity calculator and we get 150,000 meters per second or 335,541 miles per hour. Now, assuming similar forces and variables act upon the stone following the throw, as with normal humans and scales entirely linearly, this gives us a final speed of 500 meters per second, or 1,118 miles per hour, with a kinetic energy of 18,750 joules. Now to liken this to a bullet. It would be equivalent to being hit with a 4 bore round at 500 meters per second, giving us an energy of 13,829.29 foot-pounds, most definitely lethal. Again, given it's widely accepted that anything thrown at 59 foot-pounds of kinetic energy or greater from a bullet or similar projectile is enough to be classed as lethal, meaning that even a normal human being can kill another human being if they throw a stone through blunt force trauma, under these circumstances at least, a Spartan throwing a stone is comparable to being shot. A Spartan really could kill a brute with a stone. So this was a bit of a different video. I enjoyed diving into it because it's it's one of those kind of rabbit hole subjects where just at face value I thought, oh yeah, that's pretty pretty straightforward. We can just factor in the numbers, do the calculations, put them through some calculators, and boom, there we go. We get the forces involved and we can compare that to a bullet. Seemed straightforward, but once you started diving into the mechanics of throwing and how there's there's no one perfect way to throw and all the variables that come into play. Again, this is this is a very loose figure that we arrived at here. This isn't exhaustive. Uh, and I don't think I've got the time of day to go through an exhaustive approach to this to really nail it down because there are so many variables that are involved. Like I said, the more I dug, the more I found. And it did at face value seem simple, but it seems endless. In either case, I really enjoyed making this video. Big thanks to Justin Grosjean for the, the picture that inspired this and the animations that he kindly provided for this video. And if you like this kind of format of video, it's, it's almost like Answers with Joe, but halo fight. It's, it's Answers with Zero. Uh, then pop a comment down below and I'll look at doing similar things in the future. Until next time. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, consider hitting the subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out on future content, and hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. It really does help the channel out significantly. Feel free to pop a comment below on anything you'd like me to cover next, and before signing off I just want to give a shout out to my Patreon supporters, Spartan10148, my singular contender class Ancilla, Falcon, Jordan and Poseidon, the Metarchs of my facility, Sylphia, Ashley, Esoteric, Spartan